So today we're walking down the road to Emmaus. Thank you, Patty, for reading the first part of that story for us. It's a story many of us have heard before. Cleopas and the unnamed disciple are walking on the road the evening of the first Easter day. They're walking away from Jerusalem, and they encounter a stranger. And Cleopas is telling the stranger all about what has happened. I want us to hear verse 21 one more time. We had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped. Now let us hear the rest of the story. Verse 28 through 35. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and then he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures for us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God today for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, Lord of our life, reveal your word that we may faithfully recognize your voice. Restore the joy and hope that comes from walking more closely with you. Renew your love and grace in our heart, and may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts truly be acceptable in your sight this day and every day. For it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. So have you ever heard a story to told so well that somehow you felt as if you were part of it? In a few months, I'll be headed back to Emory for my annual summer pilgrimage <coughs> called Course of Study. I enjoy learning and getting to see some friends that I've made over the last couple years, and I will enjoy being immersed in a worshipful faith environment for three weeks. But I must confess, I don't enjoy being away from my family that long, and it's a lot of work getting ready for school. They give you a whole list of pre-course assignments that are due June 1st, and I love learning, but it's a lot of reading and writing papers. But I want to share a faith story that one of my professors shared with us last year. <clears throat> Dr. John Weaver is the Dean of Library Services and Educational Technology at Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas. Each year he comes to Candler to teach theological heritage to the second and third year students. He teaches the story of Christianity with passion and enthusiasm. It is his belief that if you don't know the history of something, how can you fully understand it? With that being said, he felt it was important for us to hear the history of one another, including his own history. John Weaver grew up in the middle of nowhere town in Arkansas with several siblings. Although his parents were both highly educated, his mother with a doctorate in philosophy and his father a history major, the family struggled to make ends meet. He said, I mean, really, what do you do with a philosophy and a history degree in the sticks of Arkansas? <laughs> Ultimately, hardship would hit his family when he was around 10 years old, and they would lose everything, including the trailer that they were living in on some land that was given to them by their grandfather. They would move all of their possessions and their family into a barn and live there. Because his parents were highly educated, they had a great love for books. They had an abundance of books. With no running water, electricity, and very little food, Dr. Weaver, Weaver would find himself reading in order to forget about being cold and hungry. His dad would read from the Bible at night before the light would get too dim. The young Dr. Weaver was quiet and would go to school hungry and in the same clothes he had worn the day before. So he would read. He would escape in the stories. And therein lies his love for books. 
You know, I could put myself in that story the day that he told it. He told it in such a way, I was sitting with him propped up on the barn wall, reading the tale of two cities and the hobbit over and over again. You know, it's true. You can't fully understand something unless you know its history. Luke has the same way of simply telling a story. The images and the ways that he tells the story allows us to become part of it. In fact, did you notice what Luke did in the story that we read about Emmaus? There was an unnamed disciple. The unnamed disciple could be us. We can put ourselves in this story. Our hearts, they're heavy. We're stuck on Good Friday with Jesus hanging from the cross and then Holy Saturday, the tomb has been sealed with a stone and we're carrying all that we have left. <clears throat> Just as the two d disciples carried all the supplies and baggage home, from their annual Passover pilgrimage. It might not be much, but it's heavier than ever before because our hearts are heavy. What once was the holy city of Jerusalem now haunts their every thought. It haunts our every thought. It's a road of heartbreak. And as we walk with Cleopas and talk to the stranger, our words sound like this. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. Did you hear that? We had hoped. You see, we know the story, and we can relate to the story. The past tense of hope. Those are sad and powerful words. The disciples had hoped Jesus was the one that would redeem Israel. But now they've witnessed the crucifixion, and they've only heard rumors that Jesus' body is missing from the tomb as they walk on the long road ahead of them. Have you heard those words, felt those words, or even in greater defeat uttered those words? I had hoped. We had hoped. What have you hoped for that seems to have fallen away? As the disciples speak to the stranger on the road, verse 16 tells us that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Did their minds prevent them from recognizing Jesus? Or perhaps was it their heavy, wounded hearts that they were dragging along the road with them? Are you the unnamed disciple walking along with Cleopas right now? <clears throat> I remember a time when I was little, living in Iowa. My dad was supposed to come and get us for Christmas and take us to Nebraska to see my grandma. I was so excited. I was going to get to see my dad and my grandma but then he didn't show up. School was out, my bags were packed, and we sat and waited and waited until finally my mom came in and told us kids that he wasn't coming. I had hoped. I remember dragging my bag back to my room with tears streaming down my face. My mom was just looking at me dying inside because I was sad and there was nothing that she could do about it hope. It's a powerful, powerful emotion. And the loss of hope, well, that's even more powerful. A little girl dragging her bag back to her room with her head held low. Or two disciples walking away from a once holy and celebratory city. Hope. As I read and reread this scripture this week, it's almost as if a mirror was being held up in front of me. I shook my head and tried to snap out of it, but the truth is, this scripture has potential to force us to look deeply at ourselves. Or at least it did me. Perhaps the road leading away from the holy city is ours. In this scripture, we are reminded that we have walked many heartbroken steps, feeling stuck. Nothing ahead of us seemingly recognizable. We are living in Good Friday with the feeling of sadness, confusion, hurt, anger, and uncertainty not willing to believe those words, not willing to believe those who were shouting, he's alive, he's alive. I mean, we shouted that, didn't we? We celebrated two weeks ago. We shouted it over and over again. Christ is risen. We sang hallelujahs. Have we already forgotten? Or maybe the better question is, did we ever even believe? Where has the resurrection gone? We had hoped. We had hoped mom would get better. 
but she didn't. We had hoped Dad was coming, but he didn't. We had hoped things would be different this time, but they weren't. When was there a time when you had hoped? Friends, we are invited into this story. We've all walked a broken road or two, haven't we? Maybe you're on one right now, but we know the ending, right? We just had the story read to us. We know who the stranger is. We know who, that they, who they are talking to. We know how the story unfolds, and yet we still at times find ourselves on this same road. We know the story of Jesus, just like Cleopas did when he was telling the stranger. We can tell the story of his birth, his life, his death, and even his resurrection. But do we believe it? Have we put hope in the past? Have we already forgotten, or did we miss it, just like the disciples? Is our vision so filled with heartache, grief, uncertainty, and aggravation that we can't see? Are we like Cleopas and the other disciples, and our eyes kept us from recognizing him? Let me tell you about a friend of mine I visited in the hospital a while back. She had been in a really tough place with some health issues that weren't getting better. In fact, I think she could speak to this story we were talking about this morning. Not much hope was left in her mind. She reached a very dark place. The light was seemingly gone. Everything started to spiral, and because she was down, she felt like she was letting everybody else down. When I walked in her room that day, she wouldn't even look me in the eye. As I sat with her, there were no words to be spoken, so I just simply held her hand. And when she looked at me, her eyes were dark and cold, almost as if she wasn't in the body that was lying before me. So we sat in silence, and then we prayed. I saw that friend a week or two later, and when I walked in the room, she looked my way. I could see her. There was a glimmer of light in her eyes, and she had her favorite devotional on her bedside stand she had been reading. She talked about her family visiting her, loving her. She talked about her church family praying for her, and she talked about me just simply holding her hand on that dark, dark day. There's something about looking into another's eyes. The disciples' eyes were open in the breaking of the bread when the stranger took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. They saw Jesus. Two weeks ago, we proclaimed that we believed by shouting hallelujahs. We shouted, Christ is risen. Have you had moments that you can look back and say, weren't our hearts burning? And you believed? Every single time we celebrate Holy Communion, we pray, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with all the world until Christ comes in final victory. Friends, we have had hope. We have hope, and we will continue to have hope, past, present, and future. Christ is alive. I shared with you a moment ago that I was at Camp Barnabas last weekend. <coughs> On Sunday mornings, we worship, and we always share in Holy Communion. This year, we had volunteers and campers serve. Bruce, a young man with Down syndrome, was offering the juice at the side near where I was standing. I watched him look into everybody's eyes as they dipped their bread into the cup, and he said, Jesus loves you. My eyes were open, and I saw Jesus. We have hope. Are we going to allow what we know in our hearts to speak more loudly than all of the things that clutter our minds? There's hope on whatever broken road we're walking on because we know the end of the story. We know the stone is rolled away. We don't walk on the road alone. But will we recognize the stranger? Weren't our hearts burning? Wow. Thanks be to God. On the journey to Emmaus, with a heart full of
stranger.